and welcome to Life at the Met. A programme showcasing the talents and accomplishments of our students at Belfast Metropolitan College. I'm Stephen Greer. And I'm Georgia Taggart. Coming up on today's show. We'll be taking a look at our new restaurants open for service at our very own Titanic Quarter campus. You can now live and learn with the brand new hub now available at Millfield. And we made it at the Met. We'll bring you all the glitz and glamour of graduation day. Belfast Met has opened three new restaurants at its flagship Titanic Quarter campus. The Linen Lounge, the Scullery and the Yard are now open to the public. There are three different types of dining, which means that students can immerse themselves in three different levels of training. Here is a flavour of the opening night. Well, joining us now is Sinead Scott, who manages the Linen Lounge facility, and Gavin Doran, who is Chef Lecturer of the Year. Sinead, how successful was the launch of the Linen Lounge, and how important is the establishment? The evening of the Linen Lounge launch, it was a fantastic success. We had invited um, people from local industry, our regular customers, suppliers within Northern Ireland, and they all came along. So it was fabulous for them to come along, see what our students um, have created and worked on along with our Made, it, our made at the Met book. And it was a, a great opportunity for us to showcase Belfast Met and the catering department. These facilities at the Linen Lounge are very impressive. Just how does this help our students? It's a fantastic opportunity for them to resemble and learn the skills that they're going to need in the workforce whenever they go into industry. Um, the yard, first of all, is a coffee shop where all our produce comes from Bake My Day, which is the in-house bakery within Belfast Met. Everything there is homemade, well, apart from the butter, everything's homemade. Then at lunchtime, we open the casual dining, it's just a scullery. And in the scullery, they can practice the, the skills required for casual dining and we deal with customers we're busy every day so it's great for them to practice those skills and get them ready for the workplace and then we have the linen lounge which is our fine dining area and so far this year we've hosted dinners for the IOD and for former minister Stephen Farry so that is a fantastic opportunity for them they learn the skills they can make their mistakes in the college and what we're doing all the time is we're getting them ready for industry we're making them fit, fit for purpose their hospitality is is growing so rapidly within Northern Ireland and what we need to do is we need we need to fill you know the workforce and we need to fill our restaurants hotels and bars with all our hospitality students and give them the skills that are required. Gavin as chef lecturer of the year how does this impact the quality of student teaching? Well this year it certainly started our students off very busy because because of the coverage we got for winning the award, um, we've been asked to do things just from the student union from the very first week that they've been in the kitchens. They've done over 200 covers for the student union. We've also asked to be involved with Sinead students and the BTEC students um, with things such as graduation, which for over a thousand people. So it was, and it's really exposed them to uh, different institutes and stuff that's coming into the college. And it's really given them a very realistic working environment through a variety of different food services and food styles. Well, the event also saw the launch of the College Cookbook, featuring recipes from local chefs Niall McKenna, Simon McCants, Danny Miller and Andy Ray. Sinead, how did the cookbook actually originate? Well, we had a team meeting last year, last October, one very early Monday morning at 8 o'clock, and Mary Trez wanted some innovation and creativity around the table. And in my wisdom, I came up with an idea. I said, we have all these fabulous chefs in the kitchen. Why don't we get our message out there to Northern Ireland and further afield and let them know actually what we do, how we teach them, the skills that they, that they acquire while they're with us. And to coincide with 110 years in the college, the idea came about and we got the go ahead and we decided to, to 
go with a cookbook. So we're the first college in Northern Ireland to do that. It's a fabulous legacy for the students and for our really talented chef lectures. Of course we have um, four well-known chefs on board from Northern Ireland that, you, that you've mentioned. And as well, what we wanted to do was include all the wonderful produce that Northern Ireland is now world famous for. So the thing came about and we had an idea, how are we going to differentiate this book from anything else out there? So we came about with the idea of seasonality, f food provenance, which is really, really high on the agenda nowadays. And people want to know where their food came from, um, you know, the quality of the food that they're getting. So that's the idea and it's a great showcase for the college as well. How important is this for the college, having such strong links to respected local chefs? This is really vital for the college. We're, we're all about acquiring the students with the skills to go out into the workforce, to um, build relationships, nurture relationships with local chefs. And those local chefs, they have the skills, they have the talent, they have the passion, but also they have the contacts. So for example, we might say, you know, our, our students might go out and work for them. Nor the Northern Ireland hospitality sector is crying out for, for a workforce. And hopefully we're providing that workforce, but they have contacts further afield as well. These guys, Nal McKenna and Andy Ray, they have great contacts. Um, you know, in, in America, Europe. So that's what it's all about, getting the kids the skills to go out there and to learn from the best and hopefully bring their talents back to Northern Ireland and further nurture the hospitality sector. And Gavin, what about you? Well, for me, um, on a weekly basis, I'm receiving phone calls from chefs all over Belfast looking for staff. And for the likes of the guys that we've got in the cookbook, our students, if they're willing to work hard and be dedicated to their craft, they can learn from the very best. And as Sinead says, the, the world's their oyster. So those four main contacts that we have in the book are really a pivot for wherever our students want to go, if they've got that determination and drive, and if we as staff can infuse that into them. And Gavin, does having these connections help our students going into the industry? Absolutely, it helps them because when we've got these guys coming into the college, in a way our students have already met them. So that's half the battle for them is that they're not as nervous when they're actually going out to work. For a 16, 17, 8 year old to go into a very busy, fully functional kitchen, it can be a quite intimidating experience. So when they've already put the face to the name, it does help ease them into the world of work and it does help ease them into the experience that they get, which hopefully carry them through the rest of their careers. And finally, Sinead, all these restaurants are open to the public. They are indeed. We open for coffee every morning, Monday to Friday. We open for lunch in the scullery and then we open in for a Thursday evening and we're doing Twilight Fridays as well, which is a great opportunity for the public to come in. We're fully licensed. We have lovely coffee machines, so all the, all the students are fully trained in barista skills. So absolutely everyone's welcome. We need to pack the doors so the students can learn in a real working, working environment. Well, it's really been fantastic to get an insight. Sinead and Gavin, thanks for joining us. And if you're interested in experiencing any of these facilities, call 028 90 265 170 to book yourself a table. That's 028 90 265 170. Now at Belfast Met, we pride ourselves on equal opportunities for all. With a brand new hub just opened. The college has the facilities to help those with learning difficulties learn vital life skills and develop their independence. Well, joining us now is Alison Anderson, Belfast Met's Curriculum Area Manager for Supported Learning. Well, Alison, that was just a quick look at the Live and Learn Hub. Can you tell us a little bit more about it, please? Yes, the Live and Learn Hub is a specifically designed teaching and learning space on the Millfield site and it's been specifically designed for students with complex and severe learning difficulties who are attending programmes from entry level one right through to level one. And what kind of skills do the students learn at the hub? The students learn a whole variety of skills from the core skills of literacy, numeracy and ICT right through to independent living skills, advocacy and more importantly the core skills of self-resilience and self-empowerment that run through all of our programmes. And what way are these skills that you've been talking about incorporated into the classes taught in the Hub? The classes taught in the Hub follow a nationally accredited curriculum framework but like every program there is what or there are what we call um, value added, value added learning, value added skills and the hub is a great enabler for that to happen where students can socialise, they can socialise in an adult environment, they can be included with other students and other programmes right across the college and learn what it is like to be a fully rounded student of Belfast Met. And how do the students benefit from the support that the college is providing? I'm sure they all find it helpful. Yeah, well, 
very few students with uh, severe learning difficulties could attend college without support and we put in large amounts of support to enable the students to be integrated right across the college and all of the college's activities so without that they really wouldn't be able to attend college so that's the major benefit of the supported mechanism that we have for those students. Talk us through some of the facilities at the Learning Hub. The Learning Hub is a newly designed space it's a very important new development for the college and it is an indicator of the college's commitment to this area of work. It's phase one of a two-phase build. There will be more work done on the Millfield site for students with learning difficulties. But the hub itself comprises of four main teaching and learning spaces two what we call independent living suites and those that's really a mixed economy of a teaching space where you have a classroom space, you have a computer area and you have a large kitchen area. We have three kitchen stations in each of the independent living suites where students can learn how to be more independent, how to look after themselves, how to cook meals, nutritionally healthy balanced meals for themselves and also household skills. Then we have a computer suite, which is very important in terms of enhanced learning for students. And we also have then a general classroom area at the back. But the hub is much more than just four main teaching spaces. We have for the first time been able to put in specific facilities such as there is a wet room in the hub that is, uh, has not existed on the Millfield site before and that would be for students with complex personal care needs so that they would be able to attend college where perhaps they wouldn't have been able to previously. The other specific area of the hub that we're very pleased to have been able to include it in it, we call it a quiet room and it's a room that is completely desensitising. There are a couple of sofas in it, there's nothing on the walls, it's painted in calm and quiet colours and that is for students with severe autism and Asperger's who sometimes need to be just brought down a bit where they get very agitated and very uptight and they can spend some time in that room and it calms them down and they'll be able to go on then with their studies whereas previously that would have deteriorated into behaviour patterns that might have been a bit difficult to deal with on a college site. So it's particularly important. Um, it's been very much a partnership affair with um, Estates and Facilities Management in the college who designed it and who ensured that it was built to our specifications and they have been terrific to work with and we're currently drawing up plans for phase two on the Millfield site which could be up to as many as eight specifically designed rooms on another part of the site. So it is very important in terms of signalling the college's commitment to learners who previously would have been marginalised and who come from socially disadvantaged areas of, of um, Belfast and it's part of our commitment to targeting social need as well so we are very proud of it. So you were fundraising for children in need, what actually happened on the day? The fundraising that we did for children in need, again part of it was to highlight the benefits of a specifically designed space for people with learning difficulties on the Millfield site, but it was also a partnership with childcare students in the college, so students without disabilities and students with disabilities were working together to one end and that was to raise money for children and young people who were less fortunate than themselves. So on the day we provided or we cooked and we made scones and buns and cakes for the childcare students to use in the teddy bears picnic that they were having in the canteen facility on Millfield and also then to be sold around the college and the money raised then would obviously go to children in need and we raised in excess of, I think it's sitting at the minute, about £1,100 so it was very successful. And how many students um, can you have um, at the hub at one time? It depends on um, the level of disability that the students have um, because if we have students with complex physical disabilities then the numbers are smaller um, but this year we have around 45 students studying every day in, in that space. And what sort of ages are the students? Well the students who come to the centre we cater for, for people with um, learning difficulties from 16 practically up to 60 but the, primarily the students who are studying on, in that hub are younger students so they would be between sort of 16 and 25 age range there. So what practically can the students take away from the hub? 
The practical skills that they will be learning will be skills around independent living. So it will be, as I said, about cooking healthy meals. Um, there are washing machines there, so they'll be learning how to wash clothes. There are ironing boards there. They'll be learning how to, to iron clothes, preparing them perhaps for living in sheltered accommodation or independent living whenever they uh, leave college or later on in their life. But they take away much more than those practical skills because it's very integrated unit within Millfield. It has created a great social vibe because there are outdoor areas as well. So there's outdoor seating areas for students. So they are making friendships with students on other programmes and students who don't have learning difficulties. And there's great learning in that for them as you know how they manage those friendships and how they behave and how they cope with friendships outside of their normal sort of social grouping. Well, Alison, the hub looks fantastic. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Well, after all the early mornings, hours put into coursework, it all becomes worth it for our students when they make it to the big day of graduation. The Belfast Met graduation took place at Titanic Belfast and it was a glamorous occasion where our students received their well-earned qualifications. A lot of preparation goes into this big event. Here's Michelle McCauley. Our graduation today is held in um, Titanic Belfast and also over in our Titanic Quarter campus. We have the actual ceremony here at Titanic Belfast because we have 2,000 people here and this venue here is incredible. And um, We've got a great link. We look back over the last 110 years. The college is celebrating its anniversary this year, 110 years old and it's no mean feat. And we look at where the college started 110 years ago. It was linked into a lot of our work that we did in developing skills for the engineering and the shipbuilding. So it's very fitting that we hold a graduation here today at Titanic Belfast. We're also delighted later on to go over where we have our hospitality and our refreshments and our entertainment. And it's wonderful to have it over in Titanic Quarter Campus where our hospitality and catering students will actually provide all of the entertainment and sort of hospitality today. We have upwards of a thousand students who have been studying for the last two years at Belfast Met and today is really a recognition of their efforts and the discipline and their work in getting here. You know, to achieve your qualification in higher education is no mean feat and it's so important to celebrate the milestone that our young learners have achieved but it's also important for our staff who've been involved in that journey over the last couple of months and also it's critical for the families, the parents, the wives the friends who've actually helped and supported our students. So I just think the importance of the graduation is really just honouring the graduate actually achieving their qualification, but also just celebrating how far they've come and taking the first step on their ladder in their next step of their career. Well, joining us now is our student president, Louise Meek, and Nula Boyle, head of student support. Nula, can you explain the importance of graduation and what it means to our students? Thank you very much Stephen, yes I'd be absolutely delighted. In terms of how important graduation is, it is the flagship event of the academic calendar. It is that important and it's so important because it's an opportunity for our students to stop, to reflect on their success and to most importantly celebrate it. Um, and that celebration, while the student is at the centre, their parents are celebrating, their support network are celebrating, their tutors are celebrating and the whole college is celebrating with them. It's a real majestic event um, and it starts off with our, our, um, our Mary Trez, our CEO, our director leading it out. We have Aidan Brown, our very own Aidan Brown as our master of ceremonies. Um, each and every graduate is called up on the staircase and receives their certificate from a member of the directorate team. Um, we have our music students putting the musical backdrop in. We have our catering students providing refreshments. We have our front of house students serving those refreshments. We have our wonderful hair and makeup students making everybody look beautiful before we go. Um, and we have our events management students actually helping out on the day. It's a real team effort to make it so special. In fact, our graduation committee starts work on graduation way back in May for a November ceremony. And they're looking at their class lists, their, who's going to be the honorary fellow, what students are attending, what staff are attending, what governing body members are attending, making sure all of them have their right gowns, making sure they're all sitting in the right seats. 
uh, and just all those fine details that make a graduation a success and that's how important it is. And Louise, as student president, what is your role in graduation? Well, my role in graduation really is um, leading the tutors into the um, open area uh, for them to sit down and then Mary Therese comes in. Uh, but it's not just that, I think, like it shows like a visual representation of, you know, the students are with the staff and I think that's like really, really important. And Nula, what sort of subjects are the students graduating from? Most people don't know this, but Belfast Met has nearly 3,000 higher education students. Um, people think of the college more further education, but our higher education provision is really very extensive. Um, and it's across all curriculum area, and it's by various numbers of modes of provision, full-time, part-time. Uh, I couldn't possibly go into the large provision, of, but um, I would suggest that anybody thinking about going to do a higher education course should have a look on our website and have a wee think about what they would like to do to get gowned up, so to speak. Um, and if they have any questions or any advice, if they wanted to contact our Careers and Employability Service, we would be only too willing to help them out. Just off the top of my head, a couple. We would have the HND in Software Engineering, a foundation degree in counselling, we have everything from HND in business to accounts to fine art to um, fashion management, a huge broad range. So like I say, um, my advice would be go and check out our website, look and see what's right for you and if you need a bit of help and advice contact the college and we'll get the career service in to help you. Louise, could you explain what Belfast Met offers uh, to students apart from uh, their courses? Yeah, I think it's a really good question actually because I don't think a lot of students understand like or know what is in Belfast Met aside from taking courses. Like for example, there's different like scholarship programs that they have. There's a trust fund so there is for students to get involved in as well. Uh, there's obviously the Students Council which I'm a part of and even inside the Students Council it takes you on so many different pathways. It's incredible and it's amazing for a CV. But also we've got different clubs and societies that students themselves can even set up if they wish to. For example, um, recently we've set up a GAA club for students. Uh, there is a women's sports team as well and a debating society for students who are into that kind of academic thing. Um, other than that, like, you know, there's so many different things that students don't realise that are in the, stu in the um, college and it all it really does is take the ask anyone, so yeah. And Nula, what is it like as a member of staff to finally see all of these students reach graduation? Stephen, it's actually incredibly emotional. It really is. Um, and for somebody that used to teach myself and to see students go on that journey and then to come out the other end uh, with that higher level qualification all going up. It's incredibly special. Um, on reflecting on that, one of the beauties about uh, Belfast Met is that you can start the college with very little qualifications and you can work your way up and you can progress on to your higher level education programme of study. Um, a very good example of that is a student that I had back in my teaching days in the Prince's Trust, I started off working with the most vulnerable students in the college. Um, and then you don't realise sometimes the work that you put in, how that benefits a student later on. So in my current role, when I was managing the graduation floor and I call all of the students out one by one and I congratulate them. And the very last student of that graduation was a student that I had taught previously, a number of years previously, in the Prince's Trust. Um, and he was the very last student graduating on that uh, on that ceremony and it was incredibly emotional and I was incredibly proud um, and I think all of our tutors nobody would disagree with me all of our tutors are incredibly proud of the students that they have in Belfast Met and that's why graduation is so special. And Louise what is it like for you on the big day? I think it's incredible although I don't know like every single student it makes me like unbelievably proud to see how many people get through their like year in college you know um, and it kind of makes me excited for like the day I graduate Belfast Met as well. Yeah well I really can't wait to graduate Louise and Nula thanks for joining us. Thank, thank you, you Stephen, much. thank you Georgia. Well finally with Christmas being just around the corner it is never too early to start thinking about courses. If you're thinking of studying with us next September, applications open in January. For more information on courses, visit belfastmet.ac.uk to start your application. We will also be holding a part-time open day on January 10th and a full-time open day in early February. Keep checking our social media and website for further details.
That's it from this edition of Life at the Met. Thank you to our guests and to you for watching. And don't forget, if you want any information on any of the courses we've just mentioned, you can visit our website, belfastmet.ac.uk. Or keep an eye out for some of the upcoming episodes of Life at the Met in the next coming months. But until next time, bye. bye.